Okay, last time I ran this board, I damaged this resistor and I've since replaced this with a little bit larger part. All right, ready to start our transient testing. This will be 1000 volts, 100 microsecond full width half height, two ohm source impedance, positive and negative transients in all modes. Okay, I'll go ahead and functional test it. We'll see if it's okay. Okay, the meter survived the 1000 volt test, no problems. This will be a 1.5 kV pulse. Okay, we'll go ahead and functional test it. Okay, the meter survived just fine. This next round of test will be at 2000 volts. All right, we'll go ahead and functional test. Okay, the meter's just fine. This test will be 2.5 kV. This is after making the changes of the software. This trigger menu specifies how many milliseconds that the trigger output will fire before it actually fires the transient. You can see I've got a cable attached to the back of this. This is running up to our external trigger circuit that's now hooked to the Sony camera. I made a few other changes to the software. It's, I think there's only a, maybe 20 or so bytes left in the code space. It's getting pretty tight to actually do any mods to it. You can see it's actually pretty fast now. Okay, we'll go ahead and functional test. Before I pull this thing down, of course I'm still monitoring all these waveforms with the high voltage probe. So we're currently at a thousand volts per division. And this is a hundred microseconds per division. You can see we are roughly 2.5 kV. This is the test I just ran. We'll go ahead and functional test this. Okay, the meter passed functional just fine. This will be 3000 volts. Alright, we'll go ahead and functional test it. Okay, this is going to be 4000 volt. Alright, we'll go ahead and functional test it. Alright, the meter passed the functional test. 
set it up. This will be 5,000 volts. Hmm. Looks like it reset. Well, we'll turn off the generator. Yep, that's it. Meter will not turn on. Wow, that's pretty bad. I mean, it's only 5,000 volts. So obviously I popped the cover. I started tracing out some of the circuitry. I'm not sure what the problem is. It draws a fair amount of current when you turn it on. Fair amount meaning uh, it's like 10, 20 milliamps or something I'd looked at. And it's doing that in all the modes, but the display won't fire up at all. I'd look through, check all the FETs, the diodes, everything seems to be okay but it just will not power up. I'm going to attach the oscilloscope here to one side of the gas discharge tubes and I'm going to set the meter to the volts mode. The other side of the probe again attached to the common ground and I'm going to apply a transient, the same transient that damaged the meter. Let's just see what the voltage is across this gas discharge tube and we'll also see if we can catch them lighting up. Let's have a look at the other gas discharge tube. So again, we'll be connected right on the side there, and let's just see what that looks like. This is quite interesting here. So again, this is ground, and you're still at the thousand volts per division let me just uh, zoom in here a little bit Oops. you can see it's a pretty fast transient like one data point but that is probably about 4500 volts right there where it collected that point You know, I'm not sure what's going on here. Okay, you can see I've got a couple of alligator clips up here. It's attaching again the high voltage transient generator to the two inputs. I've removed the rotary switch. I'm just going to run this and we'll see if we can see any kind of a breakdown. Again, this will be 5,000 volts. Sure enough. A couple of points here where the switch is breaking down. That does not surprise me too much. Gas discharge tubes being so slow, you know, you're feeding all that voltage right across this guy. Let's try her again. Get a little more light in there. Let's just see here took quite a bit of effort to get this camera working but I think it's going to be a good setup this is the continuity test data I collected for the Keysight U1231A 
using a 50% duty cycle and measuring the frequency where the continuity tester stops working it's greater than 2 kilohertz measuring the minimum pulse width required to trigger up the continuity tester is roughly 1.4 milliseconds the resistance required to detect a short circuit is 21 ohms and you can see it only has 1 ohm of hysteresis it's interesting this is actually the lowest resistance out of all of them again this is just the defaults where it powers up at that may be selectable the open circuit voltage is 2.728 which is very close to the highest voltage which is the Bryman at 2.9 volts short circuit current is 0.5663 milliamps which I would say is basically the middle of the road the one with the highest current so far has been the Unity UT90A you can see that's 1.15 milliamps let's look at our transient test data so again down here this is our key site meter we ran the PZO grill starter test it passed that just fine <clears throat> the Unity UT61D had failed at that so did the 61E and also the XTEC 530 if we look at supplying the maximum DC voltage again this was roughly 600 volts rated for this meter I had no problems with that at all I took it up to about 650 where it rolls over at I've never had a meter that actually failed that you wouldn't expect it would uh, doing the rectified AC test so again this is 220 volts it's been full wave rectified and the only meter that's ever failed that has been this Tech Power TP2844R again that was supplied by 5KY of course the key site meter did pass that test but the resistance mode required several minutes to recover after this test the PTCs basically drop all the power in this mode and it causes them to heat up quite a bit and that unfortunately causes that resistance quite a while to recover so then we started hitting the meter with the surge test and again it passed at 1000 volts quite a few meters had failed at that point including the BK 2705B the circuit test DMR 6550 the UTL DM2 the Southwire 12070T and the Innova 3320 next up we ran it at 1.5 kV and the Ampro Bam 530 failed at that level the Tech Power TP40 failed there and the Fluke 87V failed there next we ran it at uh, 2000 volts and the Klein Tools MM2000 had failed at that level next we took it to 2.5 kV and the Greenlee DM20 failed at that level next at 3000 volts all the meters passed and we went to 4000 everything passed and then unfortunately the meter failed at 5000 volts which is the same level that the Unity UT139C had failed at and it's also where this uh, whole peak HP760H had failed at it's really quite unfortunate because that UT139C actually has quite a few more features than this Keysight meter does and it's quite a bit cheaper this is about a fifty dollar meter at about half the cost of this I can't say I would recommend the Keysight U1231A the problem is is first of all the cost it's a hundred dollars and it really doesn't have a lot of features it has no way of measuring current it has no way to measure temperature it can't measure duty cycle when you're looking at the frequency the response is very slow and not to mention it's just not very robust compared to a lot of the other meters so there you have it unfortunately the gas discharge tubes didn't let me down uh, again very slow to switch I believe that's what let our transient on through and destroyed the rest of the meter I doubt that I'll do anything more with this meter at this point I can't see buying another Keysight meter because they are all based on gas discharge tube technology and the fact that this lower end one failed I just can't believe that any of their higher end meters are going to be much more robust hope you enjoyed the video and learned something from it till the next meter later